Hello, my name is Chris with OffToClass.com, and this is the latest video in our teacher training series. So today, we're going to talk about how to teach a really difficult concept in English, which is this, that, these, and those. So this is one of those things that all English learners need to be familiar with. They need to learn the different rules, but it can be really complicated to teach this in a way that makes sense to your students and also doesn't drive you crazy as a teacher teacher. So what we've done is we've set up a rubric for how you can teach this effectively to your students using six key concepts. So I'm going to show the six key concepts now of how to teach this, that, these, and those. We're going to go over them one by one. And by following along with this video, you're going to be much better equipped to go over this very complicated material with your students and set them up for success. So the six key concepts to how to teach this, that, these, and those are number one, starting with the concept of close and far, using them without a noun, using this and these with time, using this or that has happened or will happen or with something someone said, using demonstrative pronouns, and the plus adjective plus one or ones. So let's get started. We're gonna get right into it, starting with the concept of close and far. So I'm going to show a slide, and this is the basic summary that you need to start with with your students. So we're looking at type of noun, and we're looking at here and there. So when something is here, it's close. When something is there, it's far. And you've got to keep in mind that these things can depend on the student's perspective. So whether something is close or far depends on what the frame of reference is. But in general, we've got these two stick figures that we use that when, some, when something is here, it's close, we use this and these, and that when something is there, it's far, and we're gonna use that and those. And we've got some example sentences here on the slide. You can use this or something similar with your students. So when we're dealing with this, this is the key concept, but it's not enough. You can't just tell your students this and show your students this, and then expect that they're going to have the ability to use this, that, these, those in the real world based on just this slide where you talk about this rule. They need to practice, and the practice ideally should be by using something simple and then getting progressively more complex. So what you need to do after you show them this, the ideal next thing would be to show your students sentences with the this or that or these or those word missing. So you can see the three examples on this slide. To help your students, you would give them other sentences and remove that or those or this, and they would need to decide either this or that or these or those should go in the blank. The way that you can help students gain confidence is by starting with simple things and moving to more complex. So once they master that this, then these are for here and close things, and that and those are for there and far things, then you can start introducing complete sentences where only that word is missing. And then you can take it one step further by showing them sentences that are correct and incorrect and making sure that they can tell the difference between what a sentence that is correct looks like and what a sentence that is incorrect looks like. And if it's incorrect, they should be able to tell you how to make it right. So you can see that to do this effectively, just right at the beginning, you would need to come up with lots of example sentences or find lots of example sentences in order to do this well because just showing them the rule is just not going to be enough. So after you go over this with them, then the next thing to talk about is using this, that, these, and those without a noun. So you can see here on the slide up on the screen that when the meaning is clear, we don't need a noun. So this guy eating the breadstick, looking at it says, I'm not eating this, or the girl looking at the pants. Why did you buy these? You have at least 10 pairs. So by having students form questions. Is this your blank? Is that your, have them make their own sentences because making their own sentences, once they gain confidence using the words, that's what's going to help them to actually be able to produce this language in the real world. Once you show them that it's possible for them to use it without a noun, then you can go to the next key concept. And that is this and these with time.
So this and these, we can use them for periods of time around now. And you can see that I've got three examples here up on the slide. I will be home late this evening. These days he only wants to eat meat. Georgina starts college this year. So by once you show them the kind of basics of near and far, then you've got to kind of expand it because this, that, these, and those get used with a lot of other things. And one of the most common uses is using this and these with time. So right now, we've introduced three concepts. One, we've introduced the concept of close and far. Two, without a noun. And three, with time. By this time, when you go over this with your students, this is about the time that usually students' heads are going to start to spin. It's a lot of material, especially if you're trying to do it in a condensed amount of time. So the ideal next step is to take all three of these concepts and allow them to practice, allow them to use the language, give them different kinds of questions, whether it's true, false, or fill in the blank. Allow your students a chance to really understand these three key concepts before you move on. And the reason is because number four, the fourth key concept we're going to cover is more complex. So we talk about using that for something that has happened or something that will happen or for what somebody has just said. So that's a lot of words, but we can break that down by showing examples. I forgot to meet you yesterday. Sorry about that. That was a terrible film. We say things like this, like this in English all the time. We do it without thinking about it. And if your students aren't equipped to handle these examples, then the teaching them this, that, these, and those without these key concepts isn't going to help them. So for what someone has just said, Sally has a baby girl. I didn't know that. That's wonderful. And then you've got to give your students more examples and more chances not only to spot this in use, not only to be able to understand it when someone else says it, but you ideally want your students to be able to use this language themselves. Because so often what happens in a lesson, the teacher talks, the student listens, but the students need to have that chance to actually use the language themselves for it to be cemented into place. Otherwise, they forget it five minutes after the lesson is over. We've all had experiences as teachers like this, unfortunately, and we've all had experiences like this in learning, regardless of what the subject is, where if we don't use the material that we're learning, then it just goes right out the window. Okay. This, now that we've given the four key concepts, this is an ideal place to take a break, to go over these four key concepts, to break it off, let's say, after one lesson or one session with a student and say, we've given you four key concepts. Now this is something for you to practice. Really, you should give them some kind of homework to do so that they don't forget it between when you teach them and then the next time you see them. And now what we'll do is we'll move on to the fifth concept, which is demonstrative pronouns. So when we look at demonstrative pronouns, what I mean by that is one is a. We can use one in place of a countable noun. So let's look at that first example question. Is there a hospital nearby? Yes, there's one on Samson Avenue. These are delicious apples. Do you want one? So this is a case where you've got a, it's a kind of something that the student needs to learn first, that they've got to learn how to use one because we're setting it up for your students to be able to learn how to say things like these ones and those ones. All right, now let's move on to key concept number six, using the plus adjective plus one or ones. And this is another complicated one, so I've broken it down on this slide where we can see some examples. Let's look at A. I'd like to try on a jacket. Which one? The green one. Where are my shoes? Which ones? The black ones. Do you like these shoes? Not really. I prefer the other ones. So we want students to learn not only how to recognize, but to use the plus adjective plus ones. Now, once your students see this slide, it's going to be simple enough, but then you want to give them the chance to practice it themselves. And what better way to do that than by setting them up with sample sentences with something to replace? 
Tony likes the blue shoes, but he doesn't like the green shoes. Here's a great place for you students to practice by saying the green ones, the black ones, the leather ones, the traditional ones. By drilling this, this with your students a few times, you're going to give them the confidence they need to be able to say, oh, wow, I know how to use this and I can do it in the real world, not just when I'm sitting here with my teacher. Because that's really the goal that you want your students to be able to do this in the real world, whether it's at work, whether it's at school in whatever situation you want the things that you teach them for them to feel good enough that they can actually use it so we've gone over six key concepts at this point it's helpful to kind of summarize everything with your students so here I've shown I'm showing a summary slide that shows singular examples and plural examples of one plus noun this one that one the one the the adjective plus one or ones and if you show your student this too soon or you try to do this with your student too soon before going through all of the key concepts one by one it's going to make for a frustrating experience so for you to be able to teach these things effectively go one by one through each of the six key concepts and make sure that with, with with each one you're giving your students structured practice where you're supporting them a lot and then with each one you want to give your student practice where they're able to actually use the constructions on their own because that's really going to determine whether they really learn the material or whether they just spit back at you what you've just taught them and then they forget it later so if you want to teach this with your students basically you've got two choices Number one, you could spend a lot of time designing your own lesson plans where you have to come up with lots of examples and exercises for your students to do on your own. Or you could subscribe to Off to Class where you're going to get access to not only all of the things that I've shown you so far in the slides, but two lessons worth of material where we break this down step by step with teacher notes, with more examples, with homework, so that, you're, that you are going to be able to see exactly what you need to do even if you've never taught this before. If you haven't yet, go to offtoclass.com and sign up for a free trial and be sure to click the circle to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're going to be releasing lots of teacher training videos like this where we're going to get into some great detail showing you how to teach your students key important concepts in English. So be sure to check out our other videos and we'll see you for the next one.